हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर ऑन द सीएसआर नेट मैथमेटिक्स 2025 टुडे आई विल एक्सप्लेन यू हाउ यू कैन सॉल्व द क्वेश्चंस रिलेटेड टू द कॉम्प्लेक्स एनालिसिस फ्रॉम द पार्ट सी माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर हरीश कर्क यू कैन फॉलो एंड सब्सक्राइब माय YouTube चैनल वेयर यू कैन फाइंड द वेरियस लेक्चर रिलेटेड टू द डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन रियल एनालिसिस लीनियर एल्जेब्रा पार्शियल डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन एंड मेनी मोर यू कैन सी दिस लेक्चर इज रिलेटेड टू द कॉम्प्लेक्स एनालिसिस from the part b you must watch it and learn how you can attempt the papers in a very simple manner in this lecture we will cover the four questions the first one is the paper id 4162 4159 4161 and 160 all these four questions are related to the complex analysis now how you can solve each questions within the help of the one minute time periods fine so let's see always remember students read the statement very carefully fine so before i start i hope you can like and comment on this video as well f is the entire function so what does the meaning of the entire function you can write the given series in terms of the power series fine such that f of z is f of iota z is it okay now if you want to write in terms of the power series It's a a raised to power n, z raised to power n. It's a a raised to power n, z in this case is iota z raised to power n. If I open the i iota raised to power n, a n z raised to power n. Now, if you look about these two polynomials, fine. When they are same, only when iota raised to power n will be one. So, what is the value of the n? N must be Four times of the positive number. Fine, because we all knows iota raised to power four is my one, so I can write as a multiple of the four. Is it okay? So therefore, therefore you can write the given series as a n z raised to power n. I can substitute the value of the n is four m, where n start from the zero to infinity. So if you take m it is m is 0 to infinity it is a of 4m z of 4m so again you can see i can write this is nothing but g of where g is again the analytic function fine i can write this is a z4 of the of power m so that means f of z must be g of z4 so that means yes third option is the Correct option because this entire function and here, fine. Now from this option you can clearly say f is my symmetric. F of z and f of minus z is same. Is it okay? Now look at the third option and clearly say f is necessary a constant function. It is not always true. It is not a necessary constant function. From you can see or from here you can also see, fine. F dash zero. So can you find the value of the f dash zero? So what is the value? Uh, or you can find the firstly f dash of z. So f dash of z will be g dash into four z cube. So you can see what is the value of the f dash zero because of this z it is zero. Similarly, if you find the second derivative, it is again zero. So up to the third derivative it will be zero. But the fourth derivative is non-zero. Because it's a polynomial of the z four, so but he are talking about the z third derivative only. So yes, a, b, and c are my right answer of this problem. So you can see that it's a very simple. The idea behind this question is your target is to identify iota raised to power n is one. When will happen? Look at the second question. F is a mapping from c minus. Minus one and one is a holomorphic function. Fine. That does not takes any value in the set. In the set, z is equal to one is a center. Radius is one. So that means this is my zero. This is my two. The value of the z that is f of z does not takes the value of this set. Fine. Or you can say this is the shaded portion. Is it okay? That means they are taking only the value which is lies here. 
then the question arises is whether it's a constant removable singularity and so on so by using the little picard's theorem fine what is the little picard's theorem says that is if f is my holomorphic function if f is my holomorphic functions and it if it omits an open set or open set then you can say f is my constant function so this is my open set you can see this the strictly less than 1 so this blue color is my open and f consists of all those points apart from this circle so yes f is my constant so the first option is the correct option once f is my constant every constant function is bounded also so the third option is also correct option fine now once we prove that f is my constant what does it means whatever the singularity you have of this function fz so any singularity of the function fz are my removable fine why because if f is my constant then i can extend this holomorphic functions to the complete c fine so once you can domain to the complete c that is a is a entire or you can say the removable singularities are only be there so yes it is my correct option f has either pole or essential that is not possible because it has only singularity which is of nature removable so the right answer of this problem is a b and c are the I hope you can like comment on this video as well don't forget to subscribe my youtube channel for more details you must watch about my this lecture on the identity theorem uh, it is uh, or you can see the other lectures related to the complex numbers or you can see the identity a uh, identity you can see the py quotient of the identity theorems py quotient of the schwarz lemma fine and many more lecture available in this playlist okay look at the next one capital d is the mapping uh, is the disk this is the open disk f is a holomorphic function again on the d such that g is e raised to power 1 over z f of z is bounded that means this g is my bounded it is given to you fine that means this function must be bounded fine it must be bounded but if you look about the function e raised to power 1 over z the z is equal to 0 is my essential singularity fine and if it is an essential singularity what is the growth of this function e raised to power z it has unbounded growth fine that is obvious that because it's a essential singularity so it has unbounded growth so this function is my unbounded fine but we need a totally a bounded function so that must be when it will be the bounded functions so in the entire complex plane this function fz must be zero then only it will be bounded then only it will be there is a g or you can say this complete function will be bounded fine the property of the f must be zero then only it will be the bounded because this has the un unbounded growth so this will be only possible when f of z will be zero so f of z is a zero for the complete z is a right answer if f of z is zero the f of zero is also zero fine third option there exists a non zero constant fine but f of z must be zero and c is my non zero c is my non zero fine this is my non zero this is my non zero so that means the function f is my non zero which is contradiction so that option is cancel out look at the last option again he said there does not exist any c non zero c c is my non zero z is also non zero fine so that function is my non zero which is not possible so the correct options are a and b are my right answer of this problem fine so you can see that you just try to understand the concept of the 
boundedness when it will be the bounded because the function is my unbounded and it has the essential singularity fine so the only function which maps unbounded terms to the bounded is only the zero function or koi bhi function nahi hai complex analysis look at the last one P of Z is a non-constant polynomials. P of Z is the non-constant polynomial. You can choose as a Z, you can choose as a Z square, or you can choose as a Z raised to power n, such that S of R, which is the collection of all those Z, such that P of Z is strictly less than R, where R is my greater than zero. I think very simple. Which of the following statements are true? Open and then so on. P is my polynomial. Fine. Every polynomial function is my continuous. Is it okay? And your target is to find the Z. And we all know inverse image of the open set is open. Is it okay? No. Inverse continuous image. If F is a continuous mapping. Inverse continuous image of the open set is open, and you can see P is a continuous. If you find the inverse image, so that means Z is my open. Fine. The first option is the correct option. Is it fine? S is the bounded subset of the subset of the C. So that means your target is to prove that S Z is my bounded. Is it okay? Now. What is the meaning of the bounded? That means your target is to check what is the limit as Z approaches infinity, whether it's a finite or not. Fine. Now look at that. As Z approaches infinity, polynomial will be approximately Z raised to power n. Fine. If you consider the polynomial is like a zero plus a one Z plus up to a n Z n. So as the Z is a large. As the Z approaches infinity, this whole term, this Z raised to power n, dominates. So that means P of Z is approximately Z of n, and it goes to the infinity. Fine. This is the first method. I will tell you one more method how you can check the boundedness. So that means P of Z will goes to the infinity. Fine for the large value of the Z. So that means. You can find the easily value of the up, or you can see there must exist, there must exist the large value of the R. You can find the large value of the R so that whenever P of R or P of Z is less than equal to M, so we can find the positive number M so that mod of Z is less than of the M. So yes, this is my bound. Fine, or you can find this is less than R must contains must contain because this is a larger value, so we can find a positive real number positive R so that P of Z is less than R must contains the image or domain of this bounded. So yes, it's a bounded. There is one more way how you can think about this second way how you can prove that it's a bounded because if you look about this set given set, fine. P is my polynomial, which is my continuous. It is also the open. Fine. So that itself implies that Z is my bounded. Fine. So the second option is the correct option. Look at the third options. Whether P of Z is equal to R. That is, they are talking about the boundary of S R. So boundary of the S R is denoted by del of S R. Fine. That if I consider, say this is open, this is my S R, and this is my boundary. We can prove that P of Z is equal to R. Again, remember, polynomial is my continuous map. Fine. So how you can prove that the boundary points contain the uh, every Z on the boundary is same? I can choose the any of the subsequent any of the sequence, say A N, any of the sequence inside the R. Or I can choose any of the sequence which is does not belongs to the R, or which is basically I call as the outside the R. Fine, this is my B n, this is my A n. Is it okay? Now, 
we can find a sub we can find the sequence a n we can find the sequence b n that converges to some point on the boundary say this point is my alpha fine b n converges to the alpha and p is my continuous map so that implies p of a n limit as n approaches infinity it must be p of alpha and limit n approaches infinity of p of b n must be p of alpha is it okay but it is given that on this s z on the s r what is given to you p of z is less than of r this is from the inside fine this is from the inside what about the outside point outside point is greater than r which is my outside fine or you can consider this is my point an sequence an bn and what is the limit an it is by p of alpha p of alpha must be greater than r p of alpha must be less than r what does it means that means it must be equal to the r fine that is a simple you can simply choose as a uh, sequence inside one is the outside it converges to the single point on the boundary and prove that the image is also r that's a simple sequence and continuity definition okay look at the last point every connected subset of the sr let h is my connected subset of the sr then your target is to prove s contains the zero of the pz fine that is the root of the pz again i think is a very simple so i assume i assume s does not contains the zeros of the pz fine so what does meaning of that sorry not a s is a h fine h is a connected subset so what does it means that means in this subset of the sr that is the h in this h p of z is my non zero fine because it can never be the zeros of this fine what does it means i can define the new function let's say g of z which is 1 over z because it's a non zero and you can see p is my continuous p is my polynomial every polynomial is a uh, is a holomorphic function so this implies g of z is my holomorphic functions plus p is a polynomials it is my bounded as well fine once is holomorphic function it is a bounded functions so by using livnov eigen theorem what you can say g of z is my constant function so if g of z is my constant function this implies p of z is also my constant function function means polynomial but it is given that it is my non constant so that means this assumption is my wrong hence every connected set contains the zeros of the p so this is the way you can solve all these four questions in a very simple manner let me know in the comment box are you able to understand in a simple manner or not we will see the next lecture on the remaining part c questions till then you can subscribe my youtube channels and share this video with your friends i hope you can support my efforts and thanks for the watching best of luck students happy learning